Hello and welcome everyone. Let's talk about some basics before we get our hands dirty as this will set the foundation for our upcoming lectures. Now to someone who's not familiar with IT, the first question that might pop up in his or her mind when they hear the term Linux is, what is it? And a simple answer would be that Linux is an operating system. An operating system is a software that manages communication between the software applications, for example, web browsers, text editors, etc., and the hardware resources, for example, CPU, RAM, and other peripherals. Linux is different in a way that it is distributed under an open source license model, which means users can run it for any purpose. They can study how it works, they can modify it, and they can redistribute copies of the original or the modified version. To understand this definition better, let's have a look at this image. At the core of your system is your hardware, which means your CPU, RAM, storage, other peripherals. To manage and interact with this hardware, you have a software piece called a kernel. This is the core of your system, and this is actually the piece that is called Linux. Now to interact with this kernel, in Linux world, you have a command line interface called a shell. And this shell allows you to control your computer via commands typed into its text interface. And then on top of that, you have your user space, which is nothing but a space for each user to store their files and install their applications. And these are mutually isolated from each other. So the user space for user A will be isolated from the user space for user B. So user A cannot know what processes user B is running. Now, all of this is called a Linux distribution. A Linux distribution, often abbreviated as a distro, is an operating system made from a Linux kernel and a collection of tools and a package management system. Now, we now know what a Linux kernel is. A software package is nothing but archive files which contains compiled binaries and other resources that make up a software. And a package management system allows you to install, uninstall and update softwares on a Linux system. And that brings us to the question, where do you get these software packages from? You get them from online databases called repositories or repos. A repository is nothing but a database of application installation packages that you can download using commands such as apt-get for Ubuntu and yum for Red Hat. You can also create your own repositories if you so like. But generally, by default, when you install a Linux distro, your software center comes pre-configured with a repo. Now, we have a lot of distributions for Linux available and each distribution serves its own specific purpose. For example, I downloaded an uh, image from the internet which has a timeline of various different uh, distributions of Linux. So if you look at it, we have Debian here, we have the timeline here and as you can see each of these little lines is a Linux distribution specifically catering to a specific use case. For example, Kali Linux is a distribution which basically caters for pen testing, etc. So if I search for Kali Linux, we can see that Kali Linux is a Debian derived Linux distro designed for digital forensics and penetration testing. Similar way, if we look at Ubuntu, We'll know that Ubuntu is a free and open source of OS and Linux distribution based on, based on Debian and it is distributed under three official versions. Ubuntu desktop, which gives you a desktop like um, uh, Windows like GUI interface, Ubuntu server, which is used for servers and Ubuntu cloud. Similarly, if we look at OpenSUSE, we now know that OpenSUSE or SUSE Linux is a Linux-based distribution sponsored by SUSE Linux GmbH, 
GmbH and other companies. Now I've also downloaded this image which has some famous um, distributions for Linux. One sec, let this photo come up. Oops, hang on, let's do this. Linux distributions and you can say we have Arch Linux, CentOS, Elementary OS, Zorin. So if we, are, we open up the TechMint article, you will see various distributions. So Arch Linux looks like this. CentOS looks like this. Elementary, Zorin, Fedora. If you go through all of these, you'll know that each Linux distribution caters for a specific use case and tries to solve a specific problem. And therefore, we've got so many different uh, different distributions which you can choose from depending on what you really want. And with that, we have come to the end of our lecture. I will see you in the next lecture. Bye.